Well, our, our, our next speaker is Lakeisha Daniel Robinson. And uh, her experience progressive um, working with healthcare organizations and uh, states to define uh, performance standards to achieve financial uh, service and quality goals. Demonstrated areas of expertise include qualitative analysis, productivity reporting, project management, contact management, and benchmark analysis. Now, Dr. Daniel Robinson has worked in many important areas and contributed to many uh, projects in this area. Uh, she's been in the independent contractor for hospital systems back in 03 and 04. She worked for the Maryland Health Care Commission in Baltimore, Maryland, and was a health policy analyst um, in 04 and 05, and now is the coordinator uh, for the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services, the Center for Medicaid and CHIP Services in Baltimore, Maryland. And so I would like to welcome our next speaker, Letitia Daniel Robinson. Good morning. So um, I believe you inflated my... Uh, my, my role just a tad, just a tad. Um, I'm actually uh, presenting on behalf of uh, our, our Chief Quality Officer, Marsha Lily Blanton. Um, but I am the coordinator, and do I have slides up, or did we not get those? Okay, it's all right, we'll bring it, it's all right. Um, but in either case, I'm the coordinator of maternal and infant health initiatives at CMS um, in the Center for Medicaid and CHIP Services. Um, so today I plan to talk about the new Medicaid, um, our efforts in, around perinatal care, and then more specifically about the couple of uh, areas that, um, activities that we're doing related to breastfeeding and um, supporting that. Um, the Center for Medicaid and CHIP Services covers approximately 60 million people. Um, we are the nation's largest insurer. Um, covering almost half of all births in the country, um, covering one in 25 kids. So we really have um, certainly the opportunity to um, address population health um, and to use the levers that we have as uh, the largest insurer to do so. Um, and, and so that is what the new Medicaid is actually about. It's about partnerships. We heard earlier from uh, previous presenters about partnerships. Um, and we are trying to work better, um, particularly in the Medicaid program, um, with states, plans, providers, with advocacy organizations, and others in the field um, to improve um, outcomes uh, in general. Um, and specifically, I'm, I'm very much interested in uh, some of the perinatal outcomes. Uh, we're looking at a variety of delivery and payment reform ideas. So certainly, you may have heard about the Center for Medicaid and Medicare and Medicaid Innovation. Um, that center within CMS is looking at uh, various ways of delivering care, um, different ways, different models, um, different models for paying for that care um, that we can then expand uh, more broadly to the healthcare system and marketplace uh, very generally. Um, and, you know, clearly one of the tenants that is um, considered um, as a part of the looking at new innovations is about improving outcomes, um, improving costs, and, um, of course, you know, bettering uh, the health care. Um, so in terms of what we're doing in the Center for Medicaid and CHIP Services, uh, one of the key things, uh, unfortunately you don't have my slides, but one of the key things is um, quality measurement. So we have two sets of uh, core set. So we have a child health core set and an adult health core set um, that states can voluntarily report, although we strongly encourage reporting on them, voluntarily report to us about the status of health care um, within their states. And between those two sets, we have about nine measures that make up our maternity core set. Um, and those measures include timeliness of prenatal care, ongoing prenatal care, behavioral health risk assessment for pregnant women, well, child visits in the first 15 months of life, um, postpartum care, elective delivery, um, antenatal steroids, cesarean rates, um, and low birth weight. Um, 
I know among that group you don't hear one for breastfeeding, um, but I can tell you that, um, well, first of all, there's a, a process, a, a vetted process by which the measures are selected for inclusion in our, in a, inclusion in our core sets. Um, but the second thing is that um, Hospital Compare, I understand, will in the very near future include um, the Joint Commission measure um, for breastfeeding rates uh, in that, on that, um, that public site. So you'll be able to see um, by hospital their rates. Um, and as well, a new feature that's coming is um, uh, data aggregated to the state level. So there'll be you know, these various uh, levels of comparison that you'll be able to see for, for many of the measures, not just the breastfeeding one. Um, also, what we're doing within CMCS uh, is doing some training for state um, health program, uh, state public health and Medicaid programs to do some data linkages so that we can link claims data um, to Medicaid claims data to vital statistics data. I mean, because that those data sets combined provide a rich source of information um, in looking at outcomes and looking at um, the kinds of care that has happened. Um, you know just prior to achieving the outcomes. Um, so we're partnering with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention to deliver that training to about 13 states uh, during this current cohort. Um, it ends in um, August or so, and we're thinking about doing it again. Um, in particular, it'll help with reporting on two of our measures, at least two of our measures, um, the low birth weight measure and the um, cesarean, first cesarean rate, um, cesarean measure, first um, cesarean section measure. Um, but in addition, there's the antenatal steroid, which has um, a component um, in terms of the time within gestation that's important um, that data linkage can help with. Um, there's also um, the early elective delivery measure that, again, linkages to vital stats with the um, point of gestation in which the birth occurred can be facilitated. So that's um, something else we're doing. Um, we've also recently completed an analysis of age cup data um, comparing um, commercial Medicaid and uninsured population out, um, birth outcomes. Um, and there are a couple of poster presentations that we're doing uh, Academy Health coming up this weekend. Um, and as well, we're trying to get that one published in the Journal of Maternal and Child Health. Um, but we'll see about that. Um, I think we're still in clearance. So hopefully it'll come out sometime this decade. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, but we shall see. One item that might be, not might be, is actually probably of um, relevance for this, this body and this group meeting. Um, it's a change in some of our regulations around prevention. So you heard Dr. Lushniak talk a bit about that earlier. Um, and in terms of Medicaid coverage and payment, um, one of the things that we've done, uh, effective January 1st of this year, is to actually change who can provide preventive services. So. Um, Previously, it had to be provided by a licensed practitioner, so a physician or other licensed practitioner. Our new regulation allows for the uh, preventive service to be provided by um, someone recommended by um, a licensed practitioner or physician, um, which, which will you know, actually help. Now, one of the things that um, is definitely involved with that is the state must then pick it up and um, submit the appropriate uh, request to CMS in order to define who those individuals might be. Um, but that's something that we have made at the federal level available um, uh, in terms of our reinterpretation of uh, regulations. A couple of things that we're, we've been working on, Strong Start, you may have heard about it, uh, Strong Start for mothers and newborns, two strategies. One is about reducing early elective deliveries as a multi-pronged approach. The other is uh, enhanced prenatal care um, approaches. And Dr. Askew talked a bit about um, one of them, the home visiting piece. Um, CMS has a role in terms of evaluating that component of it um, in addition to the three other models that are being reviewed, which are group care, birthing centers, and maternity care homes. So in terms of the evaluation, one component uh, of that will be review of um, what, what's happening uh, in terms of breastfeeding. So I, I don't know that if that question has been, how that question has been defined for the other three models at this point, um, but I do know that it is part of um, the the set, uh, it's a data point um, that's coming from all of the 47 awardees that receive Strong Start funding to look at those models. <clears throat> Sorry. 
So in 2012, uh, um, I can just go on with our list of activities, but in 2012, I think we're getting a little bit more to the relevance for this group. Um, we also had an expert panel on maternal and infant health outcomes in Medicaid and CHIP convened by one of our contractors, and it was headed by um, uh, Medicaid medical director from Ohio, Dr. Applegate, and uh, James Martin, uh, past president of ACOG. And it was really to identify strategies to improve birth outcomes. So we have Strong Start running. Um, they were awarded uh, in 2012, or, uh, early 2012. Um, they had their ramp up time. But we also wanted to think about other areas that we could impact um, you know, while that program is, is ongoing. So the Strong Start will be for about four years. Um, what, are, what other you know, quick wins could we have, other areas that we could look into? And so that was what our expert panel came up with. Um, if you had my slides, you'd see some broad areas uh, that our work group, so the panel was divided into four subgroups um, that were um, uh, delineated as um, some of the higher ranked strategies. Among them was breastfeeding. Um, and uh, you know there were a number of others. One was postpartum care, actually. So from the work group um, um, report out, which happened last August, uh, we thought about what our resources were. I know Dr. Lushney and I talked about resources, um, and we certainly had to be cognizant of what um, resources we have uh, within CMCS um, and what areas that we could really, we thought we could really impact um, within the next three years. And so we identified two goals um, that we are, are gonna focus on, and we just recently uh, rolled this out, so you're, you're part of the first few who are hearing about um, our initiative. But the first one is about improving the rate and content of postpartum care, and the second is um, increasing the use of most and moderately effective contraception. So I think you know the postpartum care component is, uh, certainly has a fit with what we're trying to do here. Um, and that initiative is, <clears throat> It has like a four, four part, uh, it's four components, if you will, um, engaging states, providers, and beneficiaries, leveraging federal partnerships, technical assistance, and um, you know, uh, quality measurement. Um, within that initiative, and you can find it on our website, um, which is at Medicaid.gov, if you look under quality of care, there is a subsection called um, maternal and infant health. And there you can find the couple of pages. It's a, it's a, it's a very brief document. It's about five pages um, that lists our priority um, and uh, generally what we're planning to do as it relates to that. Um, but under promoting timely and comprehensive postpartum care, one of the items that we've listed is supporting states in adopting more effective policies and strategies for lactation services during the postpartum period. Um, you know, we heard earlier about the variation in terms of breast pumps, um, you know, manual versus electric and, and all of that. And, um, you know, we've heard about that uh, in, in, um, with discussions with our colleagues from CDC who've had more uh, a, a closer reach to um, communities. But there is state discretion in, in um, what's used. And so um, that's an important factor to keep in mind. So what we're doing right now is, is really canvassing the states um, to find out what's covered um, in terms of education and counseling, um, in terms of the supplies, um, and we are planning on preparing a map as well as potentially if we can get it in um, prior to CDC's um, next publication of their annual breastfeeding report to put some information about that there as well. A couple of other things that we're embarking on, um, we are uh, sit on the um, Best Fed Beginning Strategic Advisory Board, so we're hearing from constituents about other things that CMS can do to improve um, and support breastfeeding. Um, we also have a Text for Baby pilot project. So earlier someone mentioned reaching women directly um, and talking about behavioral change. And so that's one area that we're trying to do um, some efforts in as it relates to perinatal care in general. But um, we have four states that we're piloting a customized, a customized version so that recipients will receive specific information about resources available in their states. Um, the states are California, Ohio, Louisiana, and Oklahoma. Um, and we are also conducting an independent evaluation of that effort as well. So there will be some focus groups that are done um, to see what kind of behavioral change has 
occurred, you know, to the, to the degree that we can isolate um, this particular intervention on those behaviors. But breastfeeding is certainly one of those areas that we really want to delve into is in terms of that evaluation. So that'll be uh, conducted. It's, it's currently um, in the ramp up stages. So we're um, um, embedding, if you will, the the outreach efforts within the various state mechanisms to do so, whether it's enrollment processes or others. Um, and, and that's where that effort is. Uh, I, think, um, I'll, I'll t I think I'll pause there. Um, I know we have lunch soon, and so we'll get to any questions that may be for the two of us. <laughs>